women's series we're on race three this evening which is the sprint race i'm joined this evening um by fellow host mike williams who i have worked with before but it is his first time commentating on a women's race so i'm hoping that um the women out there can teach him a thing or two about how we race swift welcome mike how are you doing Thanks very much, Emmett. Yes, uh, thank you and welcome to everybody to this race. Yeah, uh, just like all good sports commentators, I can guarantee I'll get people's names wrong and I do apologise for that in advance. Um, but yeah, looking forward to this evening. So this is the third in the series of the ICNE Challenge brought to you by Warrior Games. And uh, this is the sprint race. And uh, Now, uh, this is six laps of a, it's the London Circuit, London Classic. Uh, and we're doing just over 38k uh, in racing. Uh, Gemma, how do you think this race is going to be different to what we've seen in the previous races? So we had the individual team trial to team uh, individual time trial to start with, and then last week, if anyone was watching, you're very aware we had the very hilly course. So this is one for the sprinters tonight, although they can't be caught out because the it is first to finish or first over the line. So there are no sprint points until until the end, which is unusual for a sprint race. So everyone's going to have to kind of sit in, make sure they don't get caught out in any breaks that happen because they will want to be there in that final sprint. They'll also want to make sure that there's least number of women around them in that final sprint, or maybe not if they like the challenge. Absolutely. I think this is a, a really tricky course, actually, because I think 
for these sorts of sprints, um, just knowing where and when to attack. There's not a huge amount of obvious places, I think, in this particular course where, you know, last week we saw with the hilly race, people could just really stretch it out. Uh, here, there's less of that opportunity, and it's going to be about making sure you're in the right bunch uh, straight out of the gates. The racing is going to have to start. So uh, let's have a quick look at the um, where the results and the standings so far. Um, now, interestingly, with the point scoring, with a, the being 25 points from top to bottom, uh, you can see here that if we look particularly at uh, the A plus category, with uh, Merla then in uh, first place, then Linda and Cornelia, you can really see that anyone in that top five, um, if you know, with a good result, can really boost themselves up these standings. Yes, I know certainly in this category we'll flick through to the others in a minute. It is a, a fairly close race up there. So let's see uh, how these ladies go. The The first two races were very different and this is different again. So we may even see someone um, completely new work their way up that, that points leaderboard as well. Let's just have a look through at the rest of the results as they stand and then we'll get into the racing because I know the ladies have, have, are well on their way now. Yeah. Similar in the ACAT here uh, with Bex Barker leading out with joint with Louise, actually, and some girls uh, chasing at their heels there with very similar points. Yeah. And in Cat B, uh, you can see there um, slightly more spread with the, the, the points there. Uh, but with Wheaty uh, certainly out in front and uh, with a with a good mix of different teams in there in that first uh, first head. And I think we've got uh, Silji there that is one of the, our live cams that we'll be going to later on during the show. So, yeah, Scott, uh, you can sorry, you can see in uh, category C where Scott and Livia and Karina there. Uh, Karina is will be will be going to uh, as well uh, in this group as well, really down to probably fourth have all got an opportunity to take the lead in this this particular race. And then finally, Cat D. And again, uh, Puck, we will be going to um, as part of our part of our show for a live view. Uh, and you can see certainly that we've got talent spread all the way through this uh, team. Uh, and is that Velo Vixen, uh, two members from the Velo Vixen team that are in there at third and fourth, Gemma? It is, yeah. Sharon, we spoke about last week and uh, Keris as well is in there. So good luck to these riders and the rest of the cats. I think we're going to jump into the live yeah. racing now because they are three minutes in and a lot can happen in three minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's see, we're on cat A now. So we're on cat A. Plus, a plus, sorry, A plus. A plus. And you can see, look, uh, as we described just in the beginning, it's going to be about getting into those groups. And you can see there's certainly uh, a break there. Um with this particular type of racing, Gemma, what's it like when you're you're getting into this first group and these first sort of breaks as they're starting to split up? Yeah, you can see we've got some riders here. We've got Hart and uh, Lily Swan in this this as well. There looks to be about well, maybe 15, just under 15 riders in this break here. It's very difficult to make it back. It depends whether these ladies start to ease up at all or whether they're going to try and pick each other off before they get to the end. Although this is a sprint race, it is a relatively longer distance, so um, just over 38k. So they're going to have to play it fairly easy. They're, they're going to be working hard right now and they might just drop on the watts a little bit to give themselves a breather and then go back in. But they will be looking at that chase group behind them to make sure the gap does not get too small. Absolutely. And you can see a few of them just starting to take turns at the front there. Uh, and there's Merla. Um, oh, we've got a working hard by the look of it got a slight pause there on the uh, the video feed um but you can see working hard there in that in that front group and you can see some of that in that front group as they were just starting to take turns on the front um and some of the group just starting to just hold into that second and third place uh, for those of you who've never raced in zwift before um because it thanks to the great programming of Zwift physics you do get that real world feeling if you're in second third or down to fourth wheel you do get an aero advantage you don't have to put out quite as many watts as the people at the front but as a group like this at this stage they're probably going to be concentrating on making sure that they keep a split from everybody else in the race um, and at this stage they might be thinking right let's just work together a little bit here um, certainly for the first couple of laps 
Yes, we were going to mention that uh, most of you will be aware now as we we go into the A category in a minute that uh, Zwift have changed their pack dynamics. Now, some of these women will have had an opportunity to race with that, but but not for very often now. I know it was um, rolled out sort of over the last few weeks, but now it should be up and running for all races. So whether these women are going to start to have to play some new tactics or, or it's just going to feel slightly different for them, I'm sure they'll soon get used to it, but, um, but it is going to be different. And switching to the A category now, it looks like we have a rider out just that's, out in front. I think that's Louise, isn't it? Or Louise, she just in a chase Louise, group. I think that's Louise. Run, is that Louise Rundquist who's uh, out in the front there? Um, yes, it is. Um, that's a tremendous bit of power that she's showing there to keep away from that group. Um, Going to be tricky. Uh, there she is. Yeah. Keeping a good even cadence, actually. Not not completely stressed out at this stage. Nice and even. Good concentration. Yeah, yeah she's Louise looks good there. Yeah, really I good. I wonder whether she's made a decision um, to go early and try and um, get away from the rest of that group. It's just really brave this early in the race because you can see there's a few of them behind her catching up. Or she may just be testing her legs out for that sprint later on sometimes if you've sat in the pack for a long race you go to sprint it, it feels like one of the hardest things you could possibly do so we may see some riders just uh testing that out tonight yeah. i know we've got lawson in this group we've got barker brewer some real strong riders in there as well yeah that's quite a big pack that we've got there actually she might have just we might have just missed her trying hoping that somebody would go with her um and obviously nobody did so she's perhaps gone back into the pack now um but i tell you what if she she knows that she's got that extra speed on these these girls at this stage these ladies at this stage that's that's a tremendous thing to have in the back of your head before you're uh, even on the first couple of laps yeah, she's just testing it out. Looking at our B riders now, it looks like we've got a bigger group here. Um, I can't see exactly, probably over 20 riders, actually. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's clearer for you, Mike. Real mix of teams, mix of riders as well. I can see Nelson, Haynes. Yeah, Wheaties up there as well. Absolutely. So there's, uh, hey, there's a lot of Tron bikes in this uh this B group uh, just shows that, that the level of experience and talent that's going to be all the way through this, um, through the field that we're going to have here. Uh, and that's a hell of a big yeah. group. Really, really good. And, then and there's Susie. our rider here. <laughs> yeah, she looks uh, fairly composed there, actually, for the start of this race. They may have had a, a tough start or maybe they had a, a pact with each other to um, work as a group and to, until uh, the point where they maybe needed to, to break off. But let's see how that progresses. Certainly different to the other categories we saw. Big group. Um, they can hopefully churn through that and then they may start to split off as they test their legs a little bit. Absolutely. There's still some um, some good power going through there, though, um, although we don't obviously have everybody's FTP in front of us. So we can't can't see uh, people are certainly still operating these first couple of laps at the, the, the upper end of uh, what's sustainable over over a long period. And as he said, although it is a sprint race and you kind of have that sprint mentality as you're going out as a big group, um, the truth is it's also a um, it is quite long. So pacing on something like this can be really, really tricky. Uh, for yourself, Gemma, where, how would you approach this race when you're racing? <laughs> well, it's probably the same as these women or maybe not so well, actually. Uh, hold on for dear life at the beginning and very much hope that it settles down. I'm not sure I've met a Zwifter yet that says that was a fairly easy start to the race. <laughs> No. Jumping in with our sea cat riders now. We've got Karina here. Oh no, we have a live feed from her coming up. Yep, there she Karina, is. Karina, she looks like she's working hard, but great yeah, feed there from hard. Karina. That's it. Oh, still managing to operate the uh, her phone whilst uh, at that pace. So we're not uh, sure whether she's on the companion app to her teammates <laughs> or. Um, <laughs> Or just uh, ordering her takeaway for afterwards. That's it. You, you've got to time it. Make sure the Domino's is there absolutely at the moment that you finish your race. Um, yeah. So also with uh, with Karina, she's gone really well in the last few races uh, as well. So I think for these first few laps, particularly with a bunch that size, they're going to have to start probably 
upping the power again on lap sort of three and four, to see if they can stretch some of it out. Because as you said, Gemma, you don't want to get to that last lap and have a massive bunch with you. You want to try and whittle it down a little bit uh, to a group that you can just take on. Yeah, you can see these C riders now um, are coming up to uh, the part where they're going to have to practice that sprint for the end. So they will be, I know it's it's fairly oh, it's and someone's flat gone. and it's straightforward, but they may just be practicing what they can do, where they need to see, yeah. where they need to start their sprint. They've got opportunities and to do that. So you may see a little bit of that. You can see there, is it Galbraith? Galbraith, just, Galbraith yeah just took a chance there maybe she's practicing for that sprint um there are also there's also a recognition badge tonight for the fastest sprinter irrelevant of where you came in the placing so you may see ladies going for that as well brilliant and uh, we've also got um looking at uh puck down towards the um puck engstrom looking down in the d category as well doesn't seem quite as big a pack at the front here maybe it's just the view that we've got but these guys yeah it looks like they've already whittled down uh to a to a much smaller group certainly than the c which would be good for her no yeah there you go great view there thank you very much uh we can see that it's a much smaller group which um if they can keep this up and sort of just perhaps drop you know four or five riders as they get through to that last lap and then go for the sprint that is absolutely where you want to be already I think we've got Puck as well for us to go and have a look at um, in terms of the live cam, see how comfortable she's looking in this in this in this bunch. Ah, unfortunately, it looks like we've just lost her feed, so uh, we'll perhaps come back to Puck uh, a little bit later. Gemma, when you're is it, you've raced this, um, I think anybody in Zwift who's raced around London will have raced on various sections of this particular course. Uh, but you've raced this course before yourself, haven't you? Sorry, Mike, um, your audio is just catching out for me. But I um, think you were saying that, you know, have I gone around this course before? I have. Um, not so much for a sprint race, actually. So this is a little bit different for the women. They might be used to picking up sprint points every lap. Whereas I mentioned before, this is uh, just a final placing thing. So they're going to have to manage their effort uh, in a different way to last week when they were going up that hill. But make no mistake, it is just as hard on the flat. Absolutely. I think with, with the flat, there's just no let up, is there? I think sometimes on a hilly course, uh, particularly if you're in a... In, in a bunch uh, if you can catch on the downhill you can sometimes get yourself a super tuck um, and just those few seconds not having to pedal and just to recover a bit is great but there's no let up here on a flat course like this right then let's have a go back to the a plus team see how those that group's getting because that was uh, kind of a a smaller group at, when we first looked at it and they would look like they were starting to string people out and here we are now we're, we're with Muller from uh, Beast Road at uh, Beast Mode. Beast Mode are a pretty big team, Gemma. I have to admit, I don't know huge amounts about the team, but I see them quite often on Zwift and also in different races that uh, different leagues that we look at. Um, is it? A, have you come across this team before much? Yeah, I believe they were a team in development and making over a, a, a fair amount of time, actually. But they've just come to the forefront of Swift racing now. I don't know so much about the if there's a men's side with them, but the women, certainly, they have done particularly well in ZLR. And I think they probably feature on the WTRL TTTs as well. They are doing really well. Um, and they have some very, very strong riders. So definitely one to a team to watch i believe that um merla hasn't got any teammates with her tonight which which no. might be a bit of a shame or certainly in this main group but i'm sure she's more than capable of managing absolutely and that's a an interesting thing with zwift but because you are um all s separated out uh, it's very hard to communicate with people that aren't in your team and sometimes if you're in a real race in real life you can kind of judge if the person next to you is feeling it a bit if they're not they're struggling a little bit if you start to see them getting out of the saddle or on different um sprints and that kind of stuff you can start to think well maybe they're suffering a bit maybe i push harder uh, and also when you're trying to look across different teams you're trying to look for a little bit of a teammate here or a little bit of uh, support or sort of just that communication of let's go for it um 
you just don't have that with Zwift, do you? So you have to kind of, um, if you don't have any teammates, you just have to try and sort of just judge and second guess what the other person's thinking. Yeah, it's really tricky. Uh, if you have very good eyes or a very good large screen, you will be able to see uh, the watts per kilo of the other riders. So you can kind of keep an eye if anyone's just starting to push that power. Obviously, a sprint may take you by surprise, um, but I usually keep an eye on that. You can see what others are doing around you. Try and make sure that if you're in the bunch that your effort is less than, <laughs> than theirs as well. So you're hopefully conserving some energy. Yeah, and you, yes. We've still got Barker oh, up there and Swan as well. Yeah, I think we're in the same Powell. kind of position, actually. This, the, the gay group and the A+, plus, they're kind of in the same sort of area, but that, uh, that A race is really thinned out from what we saw before, uh, and they're starting to get some splits in there as well. This, this particular drag is a real place where if you can get some extra power down you can just inch it out a little bit against uh, your competitors uh, and you can see a couple of the ones at the front here putting in around about four watts per kilo um, just as they're trying to put on an extra little spurt to get ahead of the others but actually now I think they're all sort of settling back down into um, yeah much more of an even tempo Yeah, I can see Watts there from Turbo. Um, we've got Deborah Sluice Parker who's in there. She was uh, up there last week and one of the brewers in there. Quite a few, a couple from Cryogen. Yeah, another great big, another big team. Uh, I'm just wondering if the bees are coming close to the sprint section yet. Uh, just to see if anybody wants, starts to stretch their legs again. interesting as well actually something oh here we are are they coming into it they may have just gone through here's the bees yeah they've just gone through so you yeah. saw a couple of riders there just out the front um it may mean that they just as we mentioned tested their legs for the sprint there we saw a young girl uh Karis blowers who is part of the socks for watts aero sparkles i know that they got a big mention on the wtrl this week they are a junior squad racing um tonight part of the socks for watts team and i know they've got lots of support coming in for tonight so yeah. um well done to anyone who's racing uh, as a junior and for for aero sparkles or other teams as well yeah aero sparkles it probably win one of the best names in this sport as well uh, it's good isn't it yeah. as well <laughs> Yeah, and it's great that uh, with Zwift and with this particular type of racing, you can race at um, all sorts of uh, different levels. You've always got something to aim for. So whether you're a junior or you're right at the top there. So we've got the Sea Cats just coming through to the sprint area here. Uh, Going to see if anybody decides to go off the front. Um, no. You can see they're getting lots of ride-ons, so they've got lots of support there from people. There's um, a couple going out, testing their legs, just seeing Ooh. when they need to start that sprint. I'm sure we've all been caught out when uh, we've um, had that, <laughs> thought we'd started our sprint in the right place and uh, have lost all the power before the end and someone's overtaken us. Absolutely. I think that if there's any, if there's any race out there that's not happened to them, then you've not done enough races because it's quite honestly is. And it's so heartbreaking. Um, I know uh, racing on this course just a couple of weeks ago, um, yeah, in a time trial with, with a friend of mine, we got to the, close to the line and decided to go for it. And uh, yeah, even if he beat me by 0.01 of a second, it hurts every time. I'm sure the same it for everyone. It does. Yeah, and that's <laughs> sometimes how close it is, actually. And these ladies, remember, will have power-ups as well. So every time they go through that finish arch, they, they actually probably get some more arches in this course as well. I'll find out for you. Um, they will be receiving a power up. The one that they really want for the sprint finish is an aero power up. So you may see riders dumping out um, other power ups that they get, such as the feather, etc., because they're, they're not so useful. I mean, anything is better than nothing at the end, but they want that helmet and they, they want to save that to that final sprint. Absolutely. And the um, oh, that's always a bit of a tricky one, because I guess, I mean, the second best one, would, would the second best one be the draft um benefit or would you 
Um, so there, the draft one is is fairly useful if you're coming into the sprint because you could kind of go off the front, but but it's still not as good as the aero helmet. And not only that, you have to implement this power up at the right time. Once again, I'm sure we've all been caught out with that. Not only are you working the hardest you have worked during the race, but you're going to have to press that one button that you can't find on your phone, your companion app, your screen at the right time. <laughs> Yeah, or, or, or for some reason, no matter how hard you hit it, it just doesn't work at that particular time you want it. Uh, we are getting some huge support from uh, you guys, so please do post in the comments. And uh, Merla, in particular, is getting some great support. Uh, not only is she the best, according to the support here, she should be the president, uh, which is... Um, I tell you what, if, if you're so good on Zwift, you need to be president, that's, that's a lot of talent. We're... Um, one final thing, actually, Gemma, just as we're, we're coming up. So I'm um, just double checking which lap we're on here. Uh, but one of the things coming up, we, we talked a couple of times previously off air about um, the in Zwift, some of the cornering. So sometimes as you're entering a corner, it can be a place where if you're even if you're in a bunch that uh, you just seem to lose some power and other members of the, the bunch can just carry that speed a little bit more through it. Uh, do you think that could be somewhere where people decide to make an attack tonight? It could be, actually. It is somewhere where you really have to concentrate as a rider through the corners, although this is a flat course. Um, there are there are a few small inclines where you have to put down some more power, but it is often the corners that catch catch you out um we're not quite sure I'm, not, I'm never quite sure what happens to do that but um it's always you always find yourself out on the side when everyone else seems to be taking the best line um some of the riders will try and up their cadence through the corners that that often helps not necessarily power just spin up their legs so that they can stay within that bunch because it will be really difficult to get to get back on if you get uh, kicked out within that corner this is our A+. Plus. I think that they're approaching the sprint now, so this must be lap number two for these riders. I think somewhere we did have possibly a lap counter, but I can't see it at the moment, so I'll, I'll do some manual counting there. Lap number two, they're coming into the sprint. Let's see if them, any of them uh, do anything this time. So Merla's just out the front there. Yeah. See, this is this is a presidential ride. I think she's now going. Oh, so, <laughs> look! We've got... it, just as you talked, uh, just as you said that, you know, if, if you go go for it, you can sometimes just get caught with the others because uh, you give them a little bit of power when they're they're sat at uh, second and third wheel. Yeah, interesting bike choice from Merla tonight. I believe that she um, does have a. a the use of a Tron bike. I've, I've seen her race on it before, but she's picked something else tonight. I think it's a specialized S works with some zip, some zip wheels on there. So something a little bit different. Whereas you see some of the other girls have gone for that Tron bike. Um, you've got Louise Hart socks for what's up there. Natalie Stevenson from cryogen popular rider. Uh, we have two air riders as well. So we've got Swan and I thought we had another, actually. I can just see her popping off the screen now. So a couple of them from the same team, which is always helpful. They may be speaking to each other. I think the bees are coming into the sprint now. Yep. And they're still big quite group. a big bunch. Yeah, big group here. Um, is he coming into this sprint? Um, you can see a few of them just hanging off a little bit towards the back here just waiting for people at the front to go. I'm not sure how many people are actually going to try and stretch their legs here. We will have to see. Even sometimes when you don't, as soon as you see that little green line, you can't help it. You know, you can just can't help yourself just putting on a few extra watts just to see. Yeah, to you can see. see some of them just using some power ups. They may be just getting rid of them. I certainly want to be getting rid of the feather, the feather <laughs> yeah. before you go under the arch and hoping that we can get uh, we another one. Here's Stedman here. She Stedman. just pushed out in front ever so slightly, but, but again, probably just seeing where she sits within the rest of the bunch. Excellent. Oh, and we've got some, uh, we, you know, we're getting some great uh, commentary from uh, uh, from the, the comments. Uh, if you want to put in a comment, please do. Uh, apparently, we've already got an update that Merla will be on the Tron bike next week. She's going to have it. 
So, oh, she uh, hasn't quite got it yet. So that's why she's on that that that, that bike. She's she's just picking up uh, the, uh, yeah. the 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 XP to get that. There I know we have. Look at this. It confirmation. She just needs an extra thirteen hundred meters of climbing. <laughs> to she's get not going to get it tonight, bike. though. Unfortunately. No, no, no. We just need a a, a, a different course for her to get there. I know that we have some ladies from Rafa CC tonight who are riding to support the One More City. It's a charity um, founded by one of the riders, Christine O'Connell, who rides with them. Apparently, they've got some special jerseys that they'll be releasing as a special image, as well as a video of them all warming up. So uh, I think that'll probably be available afterwards. That will certainly be interesting. Yeah. Oh, Here's and Karina here we have Karina. Now. Right. It's, the pace has certainly stepped up a bit from uh, uh, our previous visit. She's keeping in there, though. Good concentration, good even breathing, uh, starting to rock a bit, but that's it. Really good. Yeah, it does require a lot of concentration from these riders. You're watching a screen the whole time, as, as if you're out on the road, really, um, watching each other. Not so much... Um, as I say, you can't you can't speak to each other. You can't hear if anyone's making any changes or changing gear. So all you've got to concentrate on is your little avatar, making sure that you're in as much draft as possible, and just keeping an eye to see if any of the riders that you can see on the right there, their watts light up red. You can see one of them now. That means they're just putting in a sprint. Yep, another sprint in there. And, Kat said, and it was Karina, look at that. <laughs> Go in for it. Well yeah. done, yeah, really good. So she's yeah, going to get definitely. a breather now. You'll probably see her watts, as you can see, dropped right down there. Yeah. She's just going to have to make sure the bunch gets back up to her and then straight back on that power. And there might be a bit of a break here. Yeah. There's four of them. If Karina can get back on there, sometimes that does this. happen after a sprint. The power stays down. Oh, they are chasing her, though. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. Now I think we're on a. This is the, just the second lap for these uh, these athletes. So I think with the size of that pack behind them, it's probably as Karina's doing there. It's probably a much better bet just to drop back into that group at this stage. I think if we were another couple of laps ahead, I think a breakaway would be perhaps the way to go if your legs were feeling good. Yeah. Come on, Karina. Stay in that bunch. She had Karina, to put a little in sprint it. in there. Yeah. She's back in. She's back in. She's back in. Here's we're back with Puck now. Oh, out in front. Uh, oh no, sorry. That's uh, is that Puck we're actually watching? It yes, is, it is actually. Yes, yes. They're just oh. climbing that. Well, they did have a, a thought a small incline, but actually they're on minus one percent now. So yeah. um, they will be coming into that sprint as they turn the corner i believe yeah, they're really strung out here so I, I don't know if someone's just put in a little bit of an effort on that small i think i think you're right i think there is about about one percent it's not much really uh, just coming up that last uh, bit into the the roundabout before you turn right down into the sprint and you can see that there's a it's strung out a little bit here i don't know if that was someone perhaps just trying to break this group down a little bit because uh, it's still quite big yep there she is. She's still at the front of this group. Yeah, these guys have grouped back together now. Um, anyone who had to put in a big effort up the um, small incline, I say big effort, small incline, but it, it is hard when you're, you're working at maximum already and uh, suddenly a, a bit of an incline comes up, it can feel really, really difficult. So anyone who needs to recover is going to be doing so at the back of this group now, but just making sure they don't fall too far back because they don't want to be left by themselves that's that's tricky that is yeah and here we have yeah they're all safely around that corner nobody particularly changing position on that um this is going we have someone asking actually how many meters to go would you use the aero power up i am sure somewhere out in the world of the internet that there is an exact science to that I have never got it. Mike, how, how have you got on with that? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had it. Uh, um, I must admit, I think I, I seem to get the feather a bit more than the arrow, but with um, it's done on a time rather than a distance necessarily that you, you would have it. Uh, for me, it depends for me personally in this. I think I would probably, I would probably stick at around about third wheel in a 
bunch as it was coming round uh, for my particular setup. I'm not the, the most powerful rider. Uh, and I would sit there for probably getting myself close to that that last little bit when I'm ready to go and sprint and then I would probably deploy it because that's when you're going to have the biggest effect um, because you can maintain the aero um, and then but still manage to, to get a little bit more speed. So for me personally, uh, I would probably take it on uh, at that point. The other thing, you don't want to give away too early that you've got it which is another yeah, thing Yeah, that's to the true, because it's riders. very obvious to everybody. These A-plus just coming into that sprint now for the third time. Whittled down to, I'm going to say, 10 riders there, do you think, Mike? Yeah, about that. A little bit more, maybe. maybe. Even, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, about, around about 10 riders um, as they're coming in. But, that, yeah, it's a good question about when do you deploy it, and I think there's probably, uh, you, you would probably find yourself... I personally, I would probably find that arrow not being used up as I go over the line. There'd probably still be a few more seconds left on it just as I was over the yeah, line. Yeah, that would be good. We do see um, time and time again in all races, actually, that the people use their power-ups at different times. So actually, maybe no one's quite got the exact science of it yet. And it, and it depends on how the group is reacting around you. If you're by yourself, it's you're going to be coming into that sprint at a different power and different speed to, than if you're in a big bunch as well. Yeah. Uh, we've got a special shout out actually to Jazz Perrin, who's in the, or Jazz Perrin, sorry, it's probably a better way to dis describe it, uh, who's in the lead group of D's and is just 10 years old. So oh, wow, Jazz. Fantastic, <laughs> Jazz. That is absolutely brilliant. We'll see if we can find you when we cut to the D group. Hopefully we'll, we'll see her in there. In with the Bs now. They are still in a big group. We say, <laughs> we've said this now for the third yeah. time, Mike. <laughs> still in a big group. Um, they may have lost a couple of riders off the bat, but this is big. If you are sitting in this group, you may be thinking to yourself, how an earth am I going to distance myself from all these other women? Especially when you're already really hurting. Um, you're often pretty much working at threshold if not your maximum if you're yeah. not then you're you're having a good time and out there and how right. we, are you going to get away from these riders because the chances of you winning a sprint in, with all of these is much much slimmer than if there's there's less riders that's right and we had just seen uh silji there who was uh who looked actually quite comfortable and she did, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah really she's, one she is. Who, uh, she's one of those in the group perhaps yeah. thinking about when is she going to make her attack and i think in that particular group it is going to be about some proper racing in these last few laps just thinking tactically about when are you going to put on the power who are you going to go with who's looking strong because you're going to have to thin that look my goodness look it looks like the start of the race let alone yeah. like what are we in i think this is the is this a lap three these the they're on now it is yeah just shows how strong these races are um they've all been putting out really good power actually and to have all stayed in this lead group or as as many as we can see in this lead group we think was 50 was well, almost 54 now in this bunch with a few just off the back but but really not they, they'll get back in again soon um that that is a strong group of races there all together yeah um so as you said they're gonna have to start thinning it down so we might see that um coming through soon uh, you know we've also got the c's here another decent sized group just coming through karina was looking quite she dropped she'd sort of um gone to the back sat in the bunch after her sprint previously uh again just coming up uh, look looking quite comfortable now uh, yeah she's looking a little bit working hard but looking a bit more um composed there so hopefully she's had a bit of a chance to um sort of regain some composure these ladies might be taking on if they're just over halfway now they might be taking on a little bit of fuel because they are just burning through that at the moment they're they're working so so hard um that i would certainly be looking for something even if it was just to grab my drink with something in it um and they're also going to be pretty hot with the, even with those fans going as well yeah, I think uh, just like all the, the really great Tour de France cycling commentary, there's normally a recipe that gets thrown in because normally, because let's face it, on long tours, it's a little bit more dull. Now, we don't have time for a recipe, but Gemma, <laughs> if you were, uh, if, if when you're in racing, uh, something like this, what would be your go to for a little bit of extra nutrition? Well, um, I'm probably a fairly unusual that I can eat pretty much anything at any time on the bike. I know in the one of the recent very long rides that Zwift Insider organised, um, the Uber Pretzel, 
I think uh, I featured some chicken nuggets going in there as well. Now, I'm not sure I'd have that in a, a race like this that's so fast and furious, or if I did, I'd certainly lose out. But um, these riders are probably going to grab anything they can that's not going to make them feel um, just worse than they, they do at the moment with some heart rates up there. We're looking at uh, Louise. one of the riders now and you can see a heart rate right up there at 185. Now, we don't know her max, but that that's pretty high. And that you is can high. See that I mean, on her face. You can she see she's, like she's concentrating. Yeah. She's concentrating. She's in it. She's obviously much more in the zone than when last time she seemed to be kind of cruising it a little bit. But now you can see the racing's really starting. And I think on these next couple of laps, the people in these bigger groups are going to have to start thinking about how do I thin this down? I know we keep saying it, but the closer you get to the end of the race, the more you think about it. You can see Louise there just stretching a little bit in the front and making sure um, that, uh, yeah, she's got a nice, even fairly high cadence of over uh, over 95, uh, good watts uh, and sitting there with 186 uh, beats per minute so she's working hard at the front there but she's playing it cute you can see that she's sitting in about third or fourth wheel making sure that she's keeping aero where she can and then just taking short turns just to try and string this out we've also had the comments uh if, yeah if we've got go on no, it's okay i was just going to say we've got oaks there from uh socks for what's aero uh, she's usually in the area unicorns actually but she is also a junior rider too in this a category so well done to ruby she's doing great yeah that's incredible that because there's some brilliant competition in this particular uh, a group in fact um as, as we we both know women's racing in zwift is 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 very very uh competitive and there's some huge talent all the way through uh, the different levels that you can, you can ride in Zwift. And the fact that you can get some junior members still in this A category is uh, is astonishing. Some real stars for the future that are able to race yeah, against now, of course, internationally. I'm slightly biased because uh, being a woman myself, I'm always going to think that the women's racing is, is, is up there. Uh, uh, better more exciting than the men's but it often is a bit more dynamic um their riders you see swapping positions a lot anyone who may have been in the lead in a previous race will not necessarily do so well in another race and vice versa so it's always really interesting the pack is always moving and changing and it's it's always a great race to watch women's racing up i find um yeah, I have to have to agree. Probably, also, I probably need to watch more men's to uh, <laughs> to justify that. But yeah, oh, here we go. We've and got, the a sea sprint got someone here. else sprinting here, completely different. Yeah, there you go. Look at that, seven or eight watts per kilo. Now the question is: as you get through that line, you obviously need to take a breather. But can they make this stick? Are they going to manage to keep themselves up there? Maybe there'd be a couple of other sprinters that would have come through. You would be hoping because on this next couple of laps i think that's uh the lap four isn't it so we're now down to just uh two more laps yeah yeah we're on lap four now uh these riders are proving that actually by yourself it's going to be pretty tricky to make a break um especially on a flat course these riders the the way they're split up in their categories they are going to have similar power numbers you know within within a range so pushing ahead of someone else you're going to have to be on a, a real uh day where you're thinking I, I can do this and some real self-belief in yourself and just a bit of risk taking actually to try and move ahead of the group or maybe some teamwork if you've got a couple of people in your team in team as well so what would you would be your what is would be your call here Gemma would you be thinking any differently now would, what would your point of attack be how how long would you leave it before you start to try and string well, out the it's really difficult I think I again I think that all of us in our head are thinking I can't work any harder this is this is this is already feeling tough so to try and push out and go in a break is is just going to be even harder but it is sometimes worth it and it, it can work if you take riders by surprise often after this sprint point we've said it before that you see here it is possible to do um whether we see it tonight will be interesting but um 
Yeah, we may do if we see some teams working together, but we have a real mix of teams here as well, which is great to see, but less useful for teamwork. So we've got a Z Sun rider there, there's a Socks for Watts, a Kiss racing rider as well. Yeah, we've also got some uh, more shout outs to the various t teams as well. Uh, for RCC, we've got, um, for Rafa, we've got called out for uh, Gillian Scott and from Mel, um, obviously both working hard and doing really well in the racing, as well as to uh, Sophie from Try2, to, Try to, who's in Cat B. So we've got um, some great support coming through. We've also got an answer as well, based on the previous question about how long uh, can the aero work for you. Um, fortunately, Gemma and I have a, a great friend who's got a big brain, and he's worked out that if it's 30 miles an hour pushed to the line, uh, at 13 meters a second, the power up lasts 15 seconds. So it's something around 200 to 250 meters. So there you go. If anyone wanted that, there you go. And the post is coming up uh, there for us to see. Right, here we are. There's Karina. Still looking like she's working hard, but comfortable. Good even breathing. Still sitting there yeah, in the pack. Yeah, she looks good just sitting in this bunch here as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the distance. I've got, uh, what's that, 27 kilometres. So these guys are looking at the last 10K, uh, 10 or 11K, ready for them to come through. This is the, the point where you're already starting to think to yourself, surely, surely the pace is going to drop. Surely there's a point where I'm not going to have to work quite this hard. Um but you can see actually quite comfortably sitting there in the pack, looking at it, um, just cruising at around about two, 2.8 um, watts per kilo, which is in a category C, which is kind of perfectly doable through this last part. But again, it just comes down to how long do they leave it before they start to stretch this out. Yes, you're going to have some riders from all categories who have got a fantastic sprint and they will know that if they have a great sprint. You've got some other riders who uh, find it more of a struggle but have a great time on a, a longer push ahead. So there's going to be these women are going to be thinking about the tactics that suit them if they have got that real punch then they can probably leave it till pretty late but if they feel that that's not one of their strengths then they're going to have to make a break for it much sooner than they ordinarily would and hope that they can hold on till the end so i'm really looking forward to that actually and although it's not nice for these riders to be in a big bunch it's great for our viewers and uh, us as commentators to watch just makes it much more exciting just waiting for that last bit we've got to saw a few people just dropping off the back of some of the groups um that we did see so it is just starting to thin out and again through there that was that karina yeah karina took straight through on that sprint again uh then falling back nicely into the pack it's a it's a nice mix as she's coming through And there's Puck in that group. So we're in the Ds. Now, where is Jazz uh, that we were looking for from earlier? Jazz Perrin. Uh, is she still managing to keep within this group? Oh, there yes. she Let's is. See Look. if we can see. Oh, there she is. Brilliant. We're watching Brilliant her now. Brilliant to see. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, this group is... Yeah, this one, this, this kind of group's thinned out, I think, a lot since from what we saw before. Um, and we've got uh, a handful of riders. Oh, no, got a slightly bigger than I, I appreciated there. See, commentary, you've got to get it wrong. Um, but uh, not too big a group uh, with just two more laps to go. Uh, at, at this point, it's probably going to start hurting because of the length of the course. Um, you know, a nice sprint race, normally a lot shorter than this. So at 38K, it's going to be starting to feel that lactic acid building up. Um, going now about 40 minutes, just over 40 minutes. So this is the point where you start to feel it in your legs, start to feel it in your calves, starting to perhaps shift around a little bit on the saddle just to make sure you're, you're comfortable and you're using all the different muscles uh, in your legs to make sure that you're you're sharing the load. Right, yeah, we I think have coming a, up late, A's coming up to their beginning of their last lap very soon. Is that right? Yes, we're I believe we're going to come into the bell lap 
soon, which we will hear, which yep. is good. <laughs> so it reminds us once these ladies have passed the sprint again, they're going to be on to their final lap. Yeah, and you've still got Oaksies up there. We've got Quick, Watts. Yeah, uh, and Vice. Yeah, I must admit, I, I I, have to confess, I have got lost to work out if we've got, like, that top five from the A's are in this bunch. But um, that makes it even more exciting because it's 25 points for the uh, goes to the winner and then it's 24 points to second place and all the way down to 25th place which gets one point uh, if you're in a bunch like this that extra little sprint can actually make you up like five places uh, so from people looking at the overall series and looking to get points if the bunch is this big as we come round, those extra watts that extra effort killing yourself towards that line can genuinely get you up uh, you know five or six different places um because you're racing just so close together uh, and unlike the real world you don't have elbows and shoulders and sort of road furniture to get in the way you just uh, it's just how far and how much and how deep you can go to push against your competitors so i think they're just coming up to the the bell yes yeah, our a plus just gone through the bell lap now i was going to oh, say there you actually, go. did you hear the bell i heard the bell <laughs> yeah i heard the bell it sounds more like a Santa's sleigh, but we'll we'll call it a bell and maybe. <laughs> but you know, what? I think perhaps it just you know it's all about your background. You heard Santa's sleigh. I just heard somebody ringing for my butler. Uh... <laughs> not all of us are in such a privileged position, Mike. I, I'm not sure what he's bringing you tonight. It's, you've got too much going on. Well, I just sent him out for extra information on the uh, the, the C category because I didn't uh, didn't have enough in front of me. So. Uh... <laughs> Well done. So these A plus riders down, I think it's smaller than last lap. I'm sure we had 10 or so before. And now it looks like there's more like eight of them with a big lead. We can see now we couldn't always see this because there was too many down the side of our screen, but they've got one minute 40 on the chase group. So you can pretty much bet that these riders will be the ones coming into the sprint unless any of them drop off this group. But a, a chase group will not catch them now with a one minute 40 difference no absolutely i'm just trying to look down the the group that we've got here so we've got swan up there um and we've got boville uh grossman they've been in there since the start as well one of yeah. the betty squad riders yeah. And Natalie Stevenson, we've just shot to here. She's she's always up there in this A plus category. Real strong riders, Natalie. Yeah. And on this last lap, this is where they start to consider how much uh, are they going to give it. Uh, B riders, still a big bunch right now. They're going to have to sort this out as they come across the line. I'm sure uh, if somebody goes in here for the sprint, they're going to... Um... Yep. Oh, son, the bell got louder that lap for the B riders. It did. It did. Uh, in fact, it was so loud. I think Jeeves has just walked back in thinking I was demanding something. Um, so, yeah. So for these guys now, they're going to have to start stretching this out. Um, I think we're just coming up perhaps this corner at the bottom. This can be a bit of a tricky one sometimes. So if you get down there, put in that extra three or four pedal strokes just as you're coming into the corner and then sprint as soon as it goes round. You can drop some of the riders at the back of the group. Yes, Mike, that certainly could be a place where we might see this split a little bit into two. But again, on the flat, it is just so difficult. These riders are so well matched that um, they're doing really well to stay in that big group. Yeah, and there's Silji. Now, I'm going to have a go at uh, pronouncing the latest member of uh, RCC to get uh, a name out. Uh, now, I think it's Ursulia, Ursulia Bardovskaya. That's, yeah, that's good, Mike. Yeah, so I apologise to you uh, already for completely decimating your name, but you're getting great support here. We can still see you up in this front group, which is brilliant. Yeah, riding for RCC there. Well done. 
Right, we're coming just to the A's now. Hey, and just like proper um, sporting events, the, the weather's come in. Um, we, don't, we won't get dropouts from the riders. We will still be able, from our cameras, we'll still be able to see people. Um, but it just adds an extra element of uh, uh, excitement to the last lap. And here we are. Now, Louise has really stepped this up now. She's putting in some power. She's off out the saddle um, and pushing a, a lot harder. Yeah, I think they've got that climb. We've just caught them on that climb, actually. This is somewhere they can separate themselves from each other. I know it's only 5% and it is short, but we saw Louise just yep. changing her cadence up, getting out of the saddle there, just to give her legs something a little bit different before she comes into the sprint. Right, and here we are. So look, they're just coming up into the sprint. This is coming into the last, the last lap for these riders. So the... Um, as they come into this, they get both the sprint points here, but they're also obviously going for the win for the race as well. So uh, there's huge amount to play for uh, as they come round to this. And a bunch like this, uh, as we said, it, it's going to be really small differences that's going to make up quite a number of places. It looks like someone's gone out a slightly longer ahead there. I'm not sure if that's just somebody um, just doing a bit of a pull or if, oh yeah, the group is now with them. Right. I don't think there's going to be a lot of difference between, although the riders can't see each other, between the A plus and A. Oh, I've just had the information in, actually. There is a kilometre difference between A plus and A. So almost as fast as Mike and I can commentate, we hope that our team behind the scenes here can switch so that we can see that finish from all categories where possible. So if the A's could just hold it there and not go any yeah, quicker, that would, that would really help helpful. us out. <laughs> <laughs> so there's huge love coming in for everybody as we're getting to this last lap. Uh, there you go, uh, Claire Fennell. Um, come on, if you can beat your coach this morning in, um, from Cat B, you can definitely get yourself to the front for this race. So the A's are coming round now. Um, still working hard, still a big bunch. And Louise is there still at the front. Look, you can see her. That's a perfect place to be, sort of fourth wheel. You get the max aero benefit. Right, now they're coming into the final sprint. They're all jockeying for position. It's going to be when do they go? They're still winding up. They're already at five watts. Somebody's going first. You can see just further down, people putting in extra effort. And there it goes. Who's that? So that's uh, mckinley has gone straight off the front um, really early, got themselves back into a rhythm, trying as much power as possible. Caught by Barker. There goes Bex, Bex Barker. She's gone straight in and final. Well, look, they're deploying the aero. They've listened to David. 250 metres straight across. That is Louise. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. And look, <laughs> look how much effort that has taken. She's won the sprint and she's won it. Awesome. Brilliant, brilliant effort there, Louise. Fantastic. And put in the effort and got it. Well done. So we've got... Uh, a plus just coming through now. Now it's a much smaller group here, so we're likely to see a very, very fast sprint. Here we go. So they were just winding up. Someone's coming in from the back there. Straight off the front. There you go. Now look, you see all the watts go straight up. 11 watts per kilo. Absolutely. Look at that. Can they make it? Can they make it? People deploying the aero. Um, oh, and they've come through. That's it. Is that Grossman? Grossman has come through. And are they gonna, is she going to make it stick? Yes. Brilliant. Superb. Superb. There's a great racing there. Oh, as they come across the line, you can't quite see quickly uh, where everybody came. So there you go. So um, I think that's about sixth place from uh, the Beast, Road, Beast Mode rider. There's yeah, we'll get those sprints confirmed. Uh, often what we see on screen isn't exactly always what happens in Zwift, but uh, they, we could see who was out front there. I don't think that's going to change, but you never know about those placings further down. We'll, we'll see how those go, but an excellent job there from all of those riders. I'm sure they're, they're leaning over their turbos now, just absolutely trying to get their breath back. That's it right now. 
we're in with the bees. Now, this this still is this big bunch as they're coming through. So this is going to make it incredibly exciting uh, to see who's willing to go and how far out. Now, we've seen that the people have gone first uh, in all the other groups have not managed to make it quite to the line. So they perhaps just need to hold it off that little bit longer. People are already deploying. So people deploying the arrow there, getting rid of the feather. I'm not sure the feather makes a huge difference there. Uh, we've got two riders off the front at the moment. And that's it. And now they've gone. So now here come the others. Who have we got there? That's Nelson coming through. Look at that teammate straight across the line. Who's going to get the team honours? It's going to be that oh. Reinhold. Oh, that's close. Photo finish for those two riders, uh, <laughs> the two Swedish riders. Two from Swedish rifters there, so they've got to be pleased with that. There is no team um, points, but there is recognition for certain teams that are going to do really well in this. So well done to Swedish rifters. They're brilliant racing. That's Carolina. Oh, Carolina got it. Brilliant. And here we go. Now, Karina is coming in uh, with the Group C. We, now, we did have some of the, the C team uh, support that was coming out. I think it was probably for RCC. Uh, people supporting these guys. You can see the Karina's there. Right. I think we're just coming into the final stretch. Look at that. Look how many watches pumping out there. That's absolutely huge. Now, she's done brilliantly on the sprint races so far. Um, oh, she's just getting back into that pack getting themselves ready to come round for that final sprint. Now, I think she's won each of the sprints on the different laps so far, hasn't she, Karina? Yeah, I think so. I think we didn't quite catch all of them, um, but we can certainly see that afterwards. I But she has to put in that much every single lap. That's a lot of testing your legs. <laughs> that is. That is. Uh, and with a big bunch like this, there's going to have been people that have managed to hold off and hold off that power. You can see them ramping it up as they coming into this uh, into this last lap, trying to stretch it out because you don't want to be racing against all of these uh, other athletes as you get to the line. Um, yeah, that's always a risk, actually. Where we've seen um, some riders go ahead and uh, trying for to, for to get the fastest sprint on laps prior to this, if you've been very clever, then you can probably not deploy, uh, deploy a sprint up until the last point, but you are risking a split. Now, there hasn't been one in this CCAT, so those riders who haven't had to put any of their sprint power out yet may come through, and we might see completely different riders coming through that we've seen in all the other laps. Yeah, I'm just trying to quickly look down to see if we can see any of our points leaders in there, but as a, as a large group in there rotating around like it's a bit hard to see on the on the list other than the fact that we know that karina is going to be in there who's one of our uh where well, we've got the live stream and also one of our leaders as well got loads and loads of uh support coming in uh for for rcc and jolene yeah, RCC are uh, spamming the, the message chat on the right-hand side. So you must have some great supporters there, RCC, and some great riders as well, actually. They're doing very, yeah. very well. People often talk about the extra player, the extra rider uh, in a team, and it's definitely going to be the support that's coming in through the chat for, for RCC, which I think is uh, going to be giving them that extra boost as they come into the last sprint. So here they come here in. Here we C. go. Let's see what happens. Um, people are deploying a couple here of their uh, power-ups. When are they going to go? It's all, oh, yeah, up to about six watts per kilo for some of them. And we've got someone off the front already with the arrow uh, going a little bit early. And there you go. Who's that? Gray, right. that is, is it? Yeah, that's a big sprint. I think they've timed that very well, Gray. That's great. She's going to run out of her power up though. So she, can yeah. she hold this can eight watts per that? kilo? She's got oh, banks coming, coming up in, behind her. In. Oh, she did it. Brilliant. It was Absolutely. really, really good. We had a, a different view there. So I'm not sure who got that, but brilliant work from we saw banks and I the think other it was rider. Really? Yeah. Really oh, through. look oh, at Karina. Karina. <laughs> there she is. Good effort, Absolutely. Karina. Huge Absolutely effort. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. There is a. Uh, that's the look that we all have, I think, at the end of any <laughs> Swift race. The the leaning over the bars and just wondering why do we do this? Why do we uh, do it? Brilliant. 
absolutely fantastic. Brilliant from the seas. Now, uh, they're all through the line. I'm not sure where our D riders are. Oh, they've just started their last lap, so they've got a little bit longer. Um, I have to admit, in the Ds, I'm already supporting Jazz. I know as a commentator, we shouldn't be supporting individuals, but I'm already there supporting uh, Jazz Perrin. Oh, she's still there. You're, you're, in, you're in with the shout there, uh, Mike. She's still there. I'm just seeing who else we've got in this group because I do have some information on these D-riders. I, I spotted one of them, actually, uh, Johnson. So she's only started riding her bike since July last year. Uh, she said she doesn't even feel like a, a great endurance rider now, but she has learned that she's a great sprinter and she can even sprint better than some of those top riders up there. So look out because she absolutely loves racing. So that's Johnson. She's in this group, I believe. Ah, great. So. Oh, and I think we've got someone that's making a little bit. Of, is that someone making a dash for it already? Here we are. Oh, are we into the last? Is this onto the sprint? Just checking. Oh, no, they're just coming round for their last. They're lap. just coming so, round, yeah. first of all, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's Perrin. Ja there's Jazz. Go on, Jazz. Keep that effort in. Keep in that group. Well done. She's doing really well and a great kit choice there as well, as you would expect from any young rider. <laughs> So I'm just looking through uh, this group. So we've got Puck there as well. We have uh, Longley, Sharon Longley. She uh, did really well last week as well. She's always up there in this DCAT. And we and Nelson may... from Fellow yeah. Vixens in there as well. Yes. Which is good. Do you know what? Every time I watch uh, Zwift, um, I look at these bikes and just wish I had one of these bikes. They look great, don't they? I know they have updated uh, the zip wheels have been updated this week as well. And I wish I could update my wheel, <laughs> wheels that often as well. Uh, and there's some nice shots there from the side. So they are looking a bit a bit different, but they've they've had an update. So these riders will be enjoying those. Not sure if they'll feel any different, but we like to think they do. Yeah, absolutely. I read somewhere that just this week of one of the things that Zwift riders are guilty of. And one of them is judging uh, bikes in the real world based on how well they perform in Zwift. Um, and I have to say, I'm a big fan of the Canyon Aero Road. Air Road. Um, never ridden one in real life whatsoever, but I obviously think they're brilliant because they ride. But you think it's a great bike because <laughs> yeah. it's your favourite Swift bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it'd be almost like meeting my heroes. It'd probably be such a disappointment in real life. Um, but there we go. And you couldn't right. change colour every time you rode. <laughs> I couldn't get the colour to change to match my kit. It'd be terrible. <laughs> absolutely terrible. Uh, so look the. These guys are now keeping it nice and steady. We've got a couple of the uh, Swedish riders in there uh, as well. A few other people in similar kits. So um, it might be a couple of people in the background talking to each other, thinking about where are they going to go? When are they going to do it? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to spot that kit, actually. I don't. It's the one that's sitting at the back here, the black red and green i'm just worth trying to work out who that is because there's quite a few of them and they will be um hopefully speaking to each other just is that vcrt is that jazz yeah so we're looking at jazz at the back here so i think that's vcrt yeah it is there yeah free speed there we are so look uh yeah now if you're coming in, i have to say if you're coming into this last lap and this this group is already this big then i think jazz is already playing the best card which is sit at the back if there's not going to be a split at the front, there's probably not enough time now. And if it's not split now, it's probably going to stay together. So just hold your horses, stay at the back, conserve your energy um, and get ready for that big sprint. Yeah, you often find actually that the race can slow down in this this last section because all the riders are saving their energy for the sprint and therefore the entire pack moves slower than they have all race. That's it. <laughs> so everyone's getting their breathing back. Oh, although I've just looked at Jazzy's heart rate, 197. <laughs> That, yeah, she's ten. That's probably average. You know, that's probably resting. <laughs> she's probably just, she's probably just cruising along oh, there. Look at that. She's We've still got Ness look, in there as well. 7. Popular A rider. Um, she's, she's, she's good and very popular. We'll see her up there. 
Yeah. And I did see Johnson actually was just doing something very similar. She was just holding back, um, just rolling over around. It might, actually, it might have just been on the, the uh, slight downslope there. So look, we're up at this 4% here. This is the point where you might want to try and stretch it a little bit. Um, and you can see a few at the front, but I'm not sure if it has been stretched that they've got far enough ahead for when we hit this roundabout and come into the final sprint. No, that's Walker up there. She pushed ahead slightly on that hill, but it may have just been that she put down a little bit extra power rather than trying to make a break. But she's still pushing out the watts, actually. Yeah. And her heart rate's fairly high, so she might be trying to just yeah. do something here. But the other riders are joining her, which is what you really don't want to see when you're out in front like that. Absolutely. So it's... Uh... Oh, they've still got another corner to go. Sorry, I thought we were just coming on to the, the final part. So they've got a little bit further to go. And also, yeah, I mean, for these riders, you know, sticking uh, their effort up to anything that's sort of over around about 3.5 uh, watts per kilo, you know that, that that's a that's a pretty good effort uh, from from the D riders. And you can see that they're trying to get themselves into position. Yeah, we've got another two riders from the same team there just positioning themselves up. It is possible that they will lead each other out. That that can happen. I know this is for individual points, but they may have had an agreement <laughs> up front. Actually, I think it's three of them from that team. They may have had an agreement up front, and that often works really well. You've, I tell you what, if you tried that in any of uh, some of the other racing I've seen, you'd have to buy a lot of pizza and a lot of beer to convince your mates to, to lead you out, I think, for some of this Maybe stuff. that's what Karina was on the phone to, that was doing. It. Karina's, she, Karina's buying everybody dominoes to make sure that she was going to get We didn't get, get to see the lead out. It was too fast and furious. But, yep, that could be happening. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so as you can see, the, the it's sort of like average pace here. No one's trying to make a too much of a go for it johnson's there up in that fourth wheel um ideal kind of place to be uh, if you're a strong sprinter you want to stay just in case there is a break at the front you want to kind of go with it yeah they are going to be slightly hustling for position here um although we talked about them saving energy at the back they don't want to be too far back because it takes a little while to get through that group so you'll probably see them sort of not fighting but jostling for position a little bit at the front especially as they hit that red carpet now yeah and there you go so i think we've had someone off the back now here we are this is it this is all the timing part who's going to go how close do you stick to them uh, what we've all seen is the first person to go normally it's the sort of person who's keeping in second that manages to nip it to the line so yeah no power ups oh, yet very interesting everyone's holding back they're building up the power gradually nobody's there we go now Johns has gone for it just as you called it there <laughs> ah, Johnson, I, had some, I had some insider oh, info look there about, at look that, at that, that. Johnson That's Sharon played, lovely power. followed up by Puck as well amazing Johnson over the oh, line look at that absolutely the only person to go first and make it stick I think this evening so that's absolutely brilliant great we saw amazing the effort by all those riders well yeah. done ladies we Puck come in there as well uh and jazz just came in i think she was uh just only about about fifth in that group i couldn't quite see we'll probably see later on uh on swift power but well done to absolutely everybody in that group um huge effort and although we can't go to anyone live i can guarantee that they are leaning over the front of their bars <laughs> breathing very very heavily so congratulations to all of that group brilliant yeah, great racing from all of our riders. Now, I enjoyed commentating that, Mike. It was it was good. And I must say, for your first women's race. Do you know what? I, I think racing is racing. Uh, it, uh, and let's face it, we're looking at avatars. So um, it's... These uh, are real people, Mike. These are real people. <laughs> but I, I think, uh, particularly in terms of uh, supporting any sport type of sport, um, I think whether it's women's racing or men's racing, it doesn't... It, it, doesn't really matter it's athletes putting the effort in and trying to beat the person next to them uh, and it's brilliant to watch and i hope everybody who's watched it this evening uh, has enjoyed it and been listening to our commentary and comments uh, and found it entertaining yeah thank you very much everyone so to those supporters and the riders we are back next week for the last challenge in the series it's a crit race so uh, the bell lap, 15 laps um, of 1.9k per lap with a really tiny lead in there. So that's going to be 
different but uh, kind of similar tonight but there's there's no sprint points as such but that's that final challenge so I'm looking forward to seeing how the leaderboard change after tonight and then how these women are going to approach next week for the final race in the series do you know what it's going to be so exciting so I think of what we've seen uh, you've had your time trial you've had a hilly course this sprint race is probably most like uh, a crit race perhaps on what you've seen so far but it's going to be a lot shorter uh, and a lot more frenetic so you're going to see the different strengths of the riders coming out uh, and still next week uh, I think if you're sitting in first place going into that crit race you're still going to be nervous about people in second third all the way down to fifth I think with the, the way that the points work in this uh, and if you thought to today was fast you wait till you see the crit race uh, the bunch is coming together um, the pace that they're going to have to ride at and they are probably going to have a bunch uh sprint to the final uh the final line as well so uh yes very exciting race we're going to see next week well done to all the riders we made out some calls for the people that we could see um but honestly tremendous racing from everybody in those groups um everyone from a down to d that was brilliant really great to to watch and we do hope that we see uh all of the riders next week uh, as well yeah, that's one week to recover for riders, commentators and supporters. And we'll see you all um, same time next Saturday. But for now, goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm.